You are watching Seven River Sports here on KQEG. I'm your host, Terry Erickson. Each week, an inside look into sports, into wellness, into fitness. Well, today we uh, have the privilege of having two senior athletes from Luther High School from the cross country program. So the spotlight shines brightly on Luther High School here uh, this week on the show. Two senior athletes. David Vanucci and uh, Sam Larson. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank Thanks. you. In a New York minute, it's over. In other words, four years of just tremendous success as a Luther High School cross-country athlete. And just a few weeks ago, here as we taped the show, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, your season ended being on top again, winning the uh, Cooley Conference Championship. And it's all over. It's all over, Sam. Second time on the show. What do you think? I don't know. I, I'm kind of relieved that it's over again. It's a lot of pressure on a person, but I'm really sad because, you know, cross country is just one of those parts of your life where you just really learn to love it. Well, you, it's addictive. It's yeah. addict. I know as a weekend warrior, David, it's addictive to me. All our children are runners and so on. So it's, it's part of your DNA and it's certainly part of yours. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, I've loved running since the moment I started, and I think that's always going to be a part of me. Well, you, and speaking of starting then, you started at a very young age. Somebody must have recognized yeah. your skills when you were young. I guess so. I mean, probably my dad. He says that he always kind of knew I was going to be a runner because he was when he was younger. Um, so, yeah, right around the time I was probably 13 is when I got serious about it, and since then it's just been up from there. So, uh, did, did, did somebody recognize your skills too, Sam? It's your second time you've been on the show too, but obviously you've had maybe six, more success than you even anticipated. Yeah, I didn't really expect to be a runner, to be honest, because um, freshman year all I did was play basketball, and that's pretty much all I did. But then some of my friends, they told me that I should go out for cross country because it'd be fun. So sophomore year I joined the cross country team, and then after our first few meets, our coach came up and he talked to me like, hey Sam, like, you're doing really well like this you can make something out of this and that's kind of when the ball got rolling I guess so I don't think he just said it to make you feel good like some coaches will just oh no try to encourage their athletes which they should uh, ir irrespective of their athleticism but your coach uh, saw something in you that maybe you didn't recognize yeah, honestly, I wasn't expecting a whole lot out of this running career at first. I was just wanting to do it because there were a lot of my friends on the team. They said it'd be fun. So having my coach kind of come up and give me that little confidence booster, I think really got the ball rolling, as I said. Well, running, athletics, being a gifted athlete is fun and having success and so on. But let's face it, David, <laughs> running to a lot of people is not fun. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of work. It's, it, there's not a lot of glamour, although... Uh, you were featured in the paper not too long ago, David, for your yeah. success. But to a lot of people, it's it's grueling. It, mm -hmm. it, you don't get the media attention. So a lot of it is just mental toughness, isn't it, David? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's definitely not easy for me, you know. While, you know, other sports have an off-season, uh, I'm out there in the winter, you know, and it's like below zero, and I'm doing like 14-mile long runs, and that's not an easy thing to do. But, you know, like I said, I love it. It's a part of me, and so... I enjoy the process of that because you kind of always see yourself getting better and better, and I think that's a really cool thing. Well, David, uh, for those of you that may not know this, uh, three times state champ. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, that's incredible. I don't know if anybody at Luther High School has ever achieved that kind of success. And uh, which was this more difficult this year as a senior winning that state championship than the previous years? Yeah, for sure. Um you know, there's a lot of pressure because there's only been six people in the past 105 years of cross country who have done that. And so this year I had probably the best competition I've had out of the past three years. And I had a big target on my back, and that's a lot harder than, you know, when I was a sophomore, just kind of being the underdog and winning. It was a lot harder this year, but I'm really thankful that I was able to um, come through with it. Well, you're blessed. There's no question about it, David. So what about, what about the feeling? I mean, how many... There's not many athletes that ever have a chance to say that you're a state champ three times. Uh, and you also had incredible success in, in track and field. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure that, you know, whether you, you're a humble guy, but whether you know it or not, I mean, you're certainly, you, you've elevated yourself uh, in terms of who you are around 
the Luther High School campus. Talk yeah. about that. Um, <laughs> I guess so. I mean, you know, <laughs> that's a that's a good question. Um, you know, I guess I want people to see me for who I am and not necessarily just as a runner. So I don't really try to, you know, flaunt things too much or talk really talk about that running very much when I'm in school. So I hope that, you know, not much has changed since I was a freshman and nothing nothing happened back then. And so I like to think that things are pretty much the same as back then. But well, then we're out running. To a degree. Yeah. But um, some of that is the fact that you're grounded. Yeah. You're grounded spiritually. You're gr you're you're you you don't you're not full of yourself. You appreciate your teammates, your school, your parents, and so on. Mm -hmm. Is that did I describe you correctly? I guess so. I mean, I kind of live by knowing that running isn't definitely the most important thing in life, but it's my favorite thing to do in life. And so I think I just kind of live by that and make sure that you know when I'm doing the things that are most important, I kind of keep running separate from that. God, family, running. Do I have yeah. the right order? I'd say so. I'd say um, I'd say with running, it's mostly a lifestyle for me, and it's just kind of the way that I go about doing things in my life. Well, obviously, you have proven yourself too, Sam uh, Larson, in terms of your uh, accomplishments, and you need to be uh, you, you you need to be feel really good about that. In other words, you you achieve you achieved your goal of going to the podium, fourth mm -hmm. in state. Uh, you were tenth last year, so I mean you're getting better all the time, and so there must be some special feelings that you have about your uh, incredible climb to success. Yeah, I'm, it makes makes a person feel good to just have that kind of success. But I guess my fa my favorite part about accomplishing everything isn't necessarily like getting the medal or getting the title. It's all about like making the other people happy, you know, like the teammates, they're just happy to see you succeed. Same thing with family. I mean, I know like my family was really happy when they heard that I'd gotten fourth. Like we had like a big party, it was great. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine just last evening about the culture of cross country track. <coughs> and, and there's a distinction between that, those sports and maybe in, in, in team sports, football, basketball, mm -hmm. and so on. The distinction meaning that in cross country track, it seems like athletes from other teams are as joyful and excited about your success as your teammates are. Yeah. And you in turn are uh, appreciative of their efforts. Did I describe that correctly? Sam, what do you think? <laughs> what was the, qu the question was asking about like other people from other schools? Yeah, and the, the, yeah. just a unique culture. Um, of um, bonding with athletes and appreciating efforts from even though they're not on your team. Well, yeah, I feel like cross country is one of those sports where you know you all are doing the same thing. You're all running, and it's a really hard thing to do. Like it's a grind. You have to work really hard if you want to get the win. So when it comes to cross country, you're all, you know people from other schools recognize your hard work and they want to make sure that they know that they're really appreciative of what you're doing and they see the hard work you're putting in. You know, it's kind of something where people from other schools, they can inspire each other in a sport, whereas like sports like football, you're just competing. You're not necessarily taking the time to look at other teams and what they've accomplished. You're thinking all about yourself. Well said. Well, the, the culture to me is special um, <coughs> through our own children competing in those sports. Um, you, and and you, you embody and you personify that particular culture. Would you agree with that, David? I think so. I'd say probably the best friends I have are ones that I've met through the sport. And so, yeah, for sure, I'd say I am by you that. And, does this, and I know you're both accomplished track and field athletes mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. Now you have some time off between seasons now in the winter to prepare, which I'm sure you will, because out of season conditioning, as you well know, and preparation is the key to success not just during the season. What will we be doing during the off season, David? Um, well, for me, my season is still going on. I still have another race in two weeks for Foot Locker, hoping to qualify for nationals. Um, so my season could potentially keep going on for another four to six weeks. But um, once that's done, I'll have two weeks where I kind of don't do very much, but then it's back into you know running every day. So you don't mind running in this uh, Midwest uh, Temperatures, huh? <laughs> well, it makes you tougher, so I guess there's that. <laughs>
I guess I'm not too tough because I, I take my running inside, but yeah. this is a time when you're going to prepare also, uh, Sam, for track and field, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I'm definitely going to run over the winter, especially on those really cold days. It's definitely hard to get out the door sometimes. I have to put on the face mask so I don't <laughs> freeze my lungs, but yeah. it's just what you have to do. So, uh, but, but you, you just got to be careful of the ice and snow and all that yeah. other kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Well, well we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to get to know you a little bit more and talk about the, uh, Luther, cross country, and uh, our guests and get to know you up close and personal. So, we'll be right back. With our busy lives, it's a comfort to know that we can still remember loved ones in a traditional way with a monument. Lewiston Monuments in Lewiston, Minnesota has been helping families purchase a monument for over four generations. You'll find a large selection of beautiful granite, marble, and bronze monuments all at competitive prices. And they're a full-service company, so they also do straightening, cleaning, and repair of monuments. Stop in or call for a no-obligation consultation, or visit lewistonmonument.com for more information. At Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, we have assembled the championship team who listens to what your needs are. We install carrier comfort systems that improve the comfort, efficiency, and the air quality of your home and workplace. We serve you with highly trained technicians who are prompt, friendly, and honest. For gold star treatment, turn to the experts, Carrier and Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning. Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, your comfort is our business. Welcome back to Seven River Sports again today. The spotlight on Luther, very successful, one of the best D3 programs in the state of Wisconsin. Luther High School cross country, David Venucci and Sam Larson. I've always been impressed by Luther High School and I've been there a lot, know a lot of the staff refereed up there, but I've always been impressed with the culture uh, of just the school, the campus, the mission statement. Uh, which says providing a Christian environment, a goal of providing spiritual growth, a challenging spiritual growth, uh, leadership opportunities, all that kind of thing wrapped in uh, developing uh, a whole person around the Christian components. Uh, have you used that at, at all, David, in your growth and your journey as an athlete? Yeah, for sure. I think on the team we all have a bond that a lot of other schools can't say they have in that we all share the same faith, and I think that's a huge key in our success, you know, when we're out there knowing that we're not alone. So I think that's a big part. Does that describe your approach to, Sam, to being an athlete? Do your, your strength comes from your spirituality? Yeah, I'd say so for sure, because, you know, that faith that you have in God, you know, it kind of motivates you just to do whatever you can to, like, glorify Him, you know, show off the gifts that He's given you. Because I know before races, we always say a prayer together, that's just really strengthening, knowing that your teammates are willing to express that faith with you. There's, there's several quotes about running that kind of reflect what you said. One of them is the, to give up the greatest uh, gift you've been given is, uh, is not to do justice to what the Lord's been given you, and, uh, and that really uh, says a lot about who you are. I, there's a couple of uh, really uh, strong, important quotes that, that I have used in, that are biblical. One is in Corinthians, and it's, it goes like this. Did you know that the race, that all runners run the race, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. Seldom uh, do I run aimlessly, uh, but I run um, to strengthen my body and uh, keep myself under control. That's a part of the book of Corinthians when it talks about running. Does that reflect your approach at all, David? Yeah, for sure. I think the biggest thing with running is knowing that, you know, any wins that you might have, those aren't going to last forever. And so really you have to focus on the things that will last forever. And I think our faith reflects that. And so at the end, that's really what we live by. There's another one I like too, Sam. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, those are your uh, role models, you, your parents, and those that pave the way for you, uh, let us also lay aside every weight and every sin and cling closely as we run the race of endurance and spirituality set before us. Yeah, life is definitely an endurance. It's definitely a distance run, I believe. Our coach uses that metaphor a lot that, you know, even though we're running these races, you know, the 5Ks, you know, life is definitely, like, it's like a 50K, you know. <laughs> you, go, you keep going, it's just, it's really hard. But 
the, it's definitely endurance because keeping your faith in a world like this can be really hard sometimes. But you know, you just got to keep praying that God will give you the strength to hold on to that faith. And you know, runners always talk about moving the finish line. The finish line for you was the uh, state championship, which you did so well. But now the finish line moves moves on to another chapter. And then after that chapter, it moves on. There is no definitive finish line mm -hmm. in your journey throughout life. Would you agree with that, Sam? Oh, I definitely agree. I mean, when you're in high school, you don't really think about the rest of your life. But as soon as you get to college, you know, that's when you start thinking like, all right, next four years or however many it is. After you're out of college, you think, oh, next 20 years till I'm like 40, and it just keeps going. And uh, David, you talked about you're not you're 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 not finished yet with your season. You're going to run uh, some national races, and we we hope that you share the results. Um, talk about like we talked the next chapter of your life. You're going to move on, and and you're going to run for the Badgers, mm. and you're going to you're you're going to be in Madison, and yeah. so. When you win uh, the Big Ten championship and, <laughs> and uh, move on to the Nationals, we'll have you back on the show again. But that's going to be an interesting experience for you. What what made you decide to move in that direction? Yeah, for sure. Well, it's been a huge dream of mine since I basically started running to run for the Badgers. You know, they're one of the best teams in the country. There's no doubt about that. And um, freshman year, I went to the running camp there and immediately fell in love with the campus and the school aspect. And you know, in the several years in the past, I've gotten really, really close with all the team members there, and so it was just, it was just the right choice. Was there were other opportunities still? For sure, I uh, toured some other schools, but I always kind of knew that Madison was going to be where I was going to end up. And uh, there's a couple good programs in the immediate area too, uh, and rumor has it that you may be attending one of those and competing. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Sam? Yeah, I'm planning on uh, attending Viterbo University like right here in La Crosse, so it's going to be a lot of fun. And they have a, a program that's still kind of in its infancy, but it's growing and getting mm -hmm. better, and I'm sure they would love to have you be part of that program. Yeah, their coach has talked to me. When I went to tour their campus, their coach talked to me about how he'd love to have me on the team just to help get the program really going. Well, you... And, it's a good transition from a Christian component tied strongly there mm -hmm. um, and Luther. And so you could be a part of with your, you have a gift to be a collegiate athlete. And we hope that you'll take advantage of that. Oh, yeah, for sure. I was, yeah, just being able to, you know, transfer that athletic capability from high school over to college is definitely a blessing because there's not a lot of people that get that opportunity. And so, uh, in a few years from now, your career, what will you be doing? I'm, I'm planning on going into nursing, hopefully, because Viterbo actually, they have a great nursing school, so yeah. that's always what I've kind of wanted to do. Known throughout the world, not just the country, the world, and, and, and of course, with two uh, great medical centers here, maybe you'll stick around here too then, huh? Mm, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> maybe go out to California, hopefully. <laughs> you want the warm weather, huh? Oh, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like the cold, but, you know. You do? We actually took a trip out to California um, earlier this season for um, a meet out there, one of the biggest cross-country meets in the world, actually. So yeah, the biggest. I, I really loved it out there. It oh, I can see. I mean, how many people don't like the beaches exactly. of, of Florida or the beaches of California? Mm -hmm. So were you, were you able to, uh, when you were out there competing, were you able to get to the beaches, too, yeah. and check that out? Yeah. <laughs> what was your favorite part of uh, competing out there? Um... The beach. <laughs> it was really fun being there, but in all honesty, it was, uh, like Sam said, it's the biggest cross-country meet in the world, and I think just the atmosphere there was the craziest thing mm -hmm. I've ever been a part of. It was super cool. So, uh, school certainly is a big part of who you are, leadership, and yeah. uh, both of you. Uh, academics uh, comes first, student first, athlete second. Talk about that balance as a elite athlete, David. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes it's easy to get a little bit distracted from the academic side of things when uh, athletics is kind of at its peak, but you got to realize that, you know, especially when you go to college, the most important thing is going to be that degree, so you have to keep your focus on that. Speaking of that degree, let's just, let's just move forward quickly. I'm kind of curious to your answer on this, like 10, 20, 30 years from now when your name comes up <laughs> and they, you reflect on your years at Luther, what will they say about you? 
Um, well, I hope they'll say that, you know, aside from the athletic achievements, I hope they'll just remember the person I was and the friend I was. I think that's the most important thing. And something tells me that they would say some pretty profound, uh, significant good things about <coughs> Sam Larson, too. What would they say? Well, I'm hoping that as they're remembering David and his state <laughs> championships, they'll be sure remembering, hey, he had a pretty solid team <laughs> night, too. So, <laughs> so, so you, you want to be part of that David Vanucci conversation? <laughs> well, I mean, I guess that's kind of what I'm picturing, because obviously the state champions are going to be the ones that are on the records board. And, of oh. course, I'm hoping that years from now the coaches will say, you know, there's also this kid, Sam Larson, who is also right up there with them. So. If, if they forget to say that, I will <laughs> make sure that I remind them that there's another guy that achieves success, too. Before we close the show, you, role models, inspiration. I know your parents are a big part of this, but yeah. mm -hmm. I'm interested. David Vanucci, uh, Alex O'Hanel, yeah. who's a rock climber and, yeah. <laughs> and lived in, lives in a van, by the way, for the last <laughs> decade. Yeah. And uh, 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 Paul uh, Chilimo, yeah. who's a Kenyan runner, yeah. who's achieved great success, uh -huh. as most Kenyans do, yep. when they uh, embark on running. Those are your two role models. Yeah. Um, well, I really like Paul a lot. He runs for the U.S. He was an Army soldier, but now he's not anymore. But he's a really funny guy. I think I just like the way that he kind of approaches running with, with humor and stuff and keeps it fun. And then, you know, Alex Honnold, he is a rock climber, and he's famous for climbing some crazy stuff without using ropes. And the way he lives his life, I think, is just really cool. You know, he you know, does decide to live in a van just so he can do what he loves, and I think that that's really awesome. Uh, well, I think a free spirit would be a correct way of t to, ex to sharing uh, what he's all about. Yeah. Sam, you have some more ordinary people maybe <laughs> that are your role models? Oh, yeah, I suppose. I mean, I'd say one of my biggest role models is my grandfather, Mark. He's just been a really big inspiration just in the way he lives his life. He keeps that strong Christian aspect. He, that's how he brought us all up as his grandchildren. That's how he brought our parents up, our, my mom and dad. You know, it's just... It's really something when you have that strong man that you can just really look to in your life just for guidance, I suppose. So when you're running and uh, you're struggling, what, what, does he come into your mind? I don't know. I don't, I don't think a whole lot when I'm running. I'm just really focused on the race, but there have been times where I'm really just thinking about running and it usually ends up like being like my teammates that I end up thinking about during the race because the last thing you want to do is let your teammates down because I don't know when you're up when you're going that fast and you're way up on the leaderboard that's really something when you just don't have a good day and the team sees that it's it doesn't really help the morale a whole lot and that's kind of what rests on my shoulders sometimes David as you're winning these races struggling and some races but winning a lot and so on what what's what is the most profound thought going through your mind um that's a good question uh I think before the race, I'm definitely thinking about a lot more than during. Uh, before, I'd say, probably thinking about my teammates, my family, my friends, uh, and definitely all the hard work. But, I mean, if I'm going to be honest with you, during the race, it's all about, all right, let's get to the finish as quick as we can. You know, there's not a lot of thoughts that go through my head. Mm -hmm. But you're not looking to necessarily win the race. I mean, obviously, that's the ultimate goal, but to do your absolute best yeah. for the glory of uh, the person that, that uh, is mo more, most important in your life. Yeah. Uh, certainly, yeah. and and to be injury free and and enjoy the journey. Yeah, definitely. By the way, I've enjoyed the journey <laughs> of having you on the show, and this is the second time for both Sam and for David. And you uh, embody all the things that uh, I admire in student athletes. So we want to thank you. We want to thank yeah. you for being on the show and wish you the best of s success in track and field and throughout your entire life, David Vanucci and. Sam Larson, thanks for being on the show, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you much. We'll be back with some clips on a recent basketball game right after this. At Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, we have assembled a championship team. Who listens to what your needs are. We install carrier comfort systems that improve the comfort, efficiency, and the air quality of your home and workplace. We serve you with highly trained technicians who are prompt, friendly, and honest. For Gold Star treatment, turn to the experts, Carrier and Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning. Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, your comfort is our business.
When you're faced with the decision of selecting a monument to honor someone dear to you, call Lewiston Monuments for a no-obligation consultation. Lewiston Monument is a full-service monument company, serving families in Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin for over four generations. You'll find beautiful granite, marble, and bronze memorials all at competitive prices. Their experts can help you design the perfect and unique memorial. Lewiston Monument. Call today or on the web at lewistonmonument.com. Welcome back to Seven River Sports. Well, our broadcast crew was at the D.B. Reinhardt Athletic Complex on Tuesday, a matchup between the Blue Gold Boys and the Mauston Golden Eagles. Despite the injury to, to all-conference senior Brandon Murfeldt, the Blue Gold's fought hard the entire way. The hot shooting of senior Joe Bauer uh, helped the Mauston Golden Eagles to an early lead. Bauer finished with a game-high 24 points. The Blue Goals were down by as many as 23 points with under eight minutes left in the game. It was a challenge to dig out from that deficit despite a great defensive effort down the stretch. Sophomore Andrew Skemp led the way for Aquinas with a team-high 12 points. Seniors Bryce Lee and Jacob Salvadelli contributed 10 points. Off the bench, Max Gelger scored nine points. The Blue Goals skipped, slipped to 0-2 and we'll host Prayer to Sheen next Tuesday. Well, I hope you enjoyed our show this week, Seven River Sports. I'm your host, Terry Erickson, hoping you will have an active and a healthy week.